interested in Nebraska. I've yet to see it. it it's got my interest because of just the black and white thing. Okay. But um, also Alexander Payne, I do like his direction style. Uh, did he direct about Schmidt? Am I wrong there? No. Um, yeah. I'm wrong, or yeah, he did. Yeah, he did direct he did, the Ben yeah, Schmidt. Yeah, 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 that was a movie that I really could not get into. Okay, um, but yeah, uh, and Bruce Dern. I'm a, I, I like Bruce Dern. He, he's, he's definitely an interesting actor. At number nine, it's Thor: The Dark World. I think we said everything we can about Thor. Yeah. Um, he's doing well to hang in there, though, isn't he? How I many was it? Two okay, months. Yeah. Well, sort of. I wouldn't say he's done well. It, it was expected that this film would take around about the twenty twenty two million pound mark when before it left the, the box office, and it's on the nineteen million pound mark now. So it might just scrape the twenty million, which. I wouldn't actually see it as a as a big result for a, a Marvel film, to be honest. It's not going to make the top ten films of the year at all. It's I don't even think that it's made the top fifteen. Right. I think it's barely getting into the top twenty. So, it, sort of considering that it is probably one of the more entertaining Marvel films. Okay. At number eight, it's The Butler. Lee Daniels, The Butler. Yeah. Um, Oprah Winfrey was doing lots of press junket for this and she very rarely does that kind of thing. She publicised this film a lot because she she believed that this film is very Oscar contention and he thinks so in the acting style. In the film, he, he thought it was a bit lacklustre but he thought the acting was the, the kind of thing that brought the film, um, levitated the film a lot more. So you can see where she's coming from on that uh, standpoint. Whether it'll do well at next year's Oscars remains to be seen though. At number seven, it's Carrie. Yeah, pointless remake. Absolutely pointless remake because it's a, it's a remake by the numbers. It copies everything from Brian De Palma's Carrie, the 1974 film. Sissy Spacek, she, she just steals the shore in that film. Whereas in this one, Chloe Grace Moritz is just completely miscast. They could have, I think they should have went with a, a completely unknown actress um, uh, an unknown actress that nobody actually has seen in films before. Maybe it'll be a first part. And somebody who looks a bit different rather than getting somebody who, if you look at the poster, Carrie's got makeup on. And that's not what the character is like. It's a troubled girl rather than somebody who, who wears makeup and has mutant powers. Mm-hmm. She might as well have just been in the X-Men. Uh, one of the things about Sissy Spacek as well, and the reason she works so well as Carrie, um, and this is a theme of King's book, was that while not Sissy Spacek, you know, was a very very nice looking girl, but she was different looking. Whereas Chloe Grace Moretz is just your stereotypically, stereotypically pretty girl. Yeah, uh, you know, there's no reason why you think she would be victimised. And this is one of the issues I had with Kick, Kick Ass too, as well. I know that whole thing where she was picked on with other girls and stuff. Yeah, why? why? That, that's not how it works. Um, and Sissy Spacek had that, so that was the only thing that I I haven't seen this yet, and I am looking forward to seeing it. But I probably will wait for the sort of the DVD Blu-ray release. Do they even make her look a bit rough at the start no. of the movie? Like, do they have her without makeup on? Do they have she, her a bit straggly at least? Sort of, but you still think to yourself that as soon as you see her on screen, that it should it's completely miscast. It is the wrong actress to play a Carrie. So th- even when she's got no makeup on, she still looks a bit too perfect for the role. Super. <laughs> He's making rude gestures here. Yeah, he meaning you. As in we. And also me. <laughs> Speaking of which, at number six, it's Free Birds. Easy. Yeah, time traveling turkeys. Okay, enough said. At number five. <laughs> no, Stuart, do you want to say anything about Free Birds? Or? I think we've... No, time, time traveling turkeys. You try to take turkey off the menu and replace it with pizza. Yep, enough said. <laughs> uh, number five, it's a new entry, Homefront. Jason Statham action film written by Sylvester Stallone. Is it any good? Have you seen it? Has Andy seen it? I haven't seen it. Andy has saw it and he says it's not as bad as a lot of people make it out to be, considering I... that it is written by Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, I want to see this. I really want to see this. Yeah? Yeah. I have a I think man crush on the state. I, you know, I just I like seeing kick ass. I know you do. I know. I know, I know you I know, do. It's, it's, it makes me feel. But this very... one does look good. I mean, this looks pretty good because uh, what do you call him? I had a Spider Man, the tube uh, that plays the bad guy. In this. There's, there's many tubes. James Franco. James Franco. James Franco. <clears throat> he looks pretty good in it as the villain, and I like the idea that you know it's not just the usual. There seems to be a bit of a story behind this one. It does look interesting. I mean, the whole idea is that he, uh, you know, Franco's a drug dealer, isn't that right, Stuart? And, yeah. And, and is is. Stath's daughter ends up getting into trouble with with him or with his son or something, right? 
Yeah, at yeah. school, she ends off um, punching him uh, in a fight because he pushes her over and she retaliates, and then the school gets involved and he gets involved, and then it just to me it looks really generic. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like that. I like the look of it. But Steve beating people up that'll do for me. Then you could like watch any movie that Jason Statham's in. I pretty much have. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Moving on. At number four, it's Saving Mr. Banks. Um, are any of you a Mary Poppins fan? Mm. Well, you might say I am, but for entirely different reasons. Jim, Jim, you really do need to give him a slap. I wouldn't mind seeing her Jim Chimney, Jim Chimney, Chiru. Right, have <laughs> that. I'm, that. I'm one of those. Ow, oh, ah. There you go. I deserve that. Thank you, Ken. I like that. So, so I'm guessing that's a no. I was imagining you were Mary Poppins. I, no, I, you know what? I'm not a fan of Mary Poppins. It was on TV. I'd watched it, and I certainly would watch it with the kids. And I always remember having fond memories of it because I loved that whole real world animation kind of thing. And I thought it did it better than things like bed knobs and broomsticks, broomsticks and, yeah, you know, stuff like that. Um, Speaking of bed knobs and broomsticks, careful. Mike. So, so yeah, I like I like it in that respect. Um, but I wouldn't be a fan of it. No, you. Yeah, well. Be. Well, well, this is centres on the uh, the creation of Mary Poppins. P.L. Travis is the one who created it, and she originally didn't want uh, her book turned into a film. Uh, Walt Disney spent 20 years trying to persuade her to do that. And so it, it's Emma Thompson, who's just absolutely amazing in the movie. I thought that the, the acting from uh, Dame Judi Dench was fantastic in Philomena, and she was my forerunner as uh, best actress of this year. And I saw this, and Emma Thompson just blows her out of the water. She's just brilliant as P.L. Travis. She's very witty, very sarcastic. And you can definitely uh, see that she cherishes the character that sh- she created. And it takes a lot to try and persuade her. And the more you watch the film, the more she does get persuaded. And when you do finally see uh, when she the scene where she is watching Mary Poppins on the screen, her creation come to life. It, it's obviously that's where she cries, and it, it. Yeah, I nearly cried myself on that on that scene. But I loved the film. I thought it was brilliant. I even tried. I even started to sing along to the songs in my head. Though I along to the songs in my head. Though I didn't sing along in the cinema because then I would have been even more weird than I am. But I, I really liked the film. Dressing up like the doctor at the fiftieth anniversary and singing along to Mary Poppins. What's going on? Who are you? I, have you done I, I never dressed up as the doctor. I was stuck in a room me? full of people dressed up as the doctor. No, you said to me, told me that you had your wee bow tie and all on, <laughs> and your fez, and your sonic screwdriver, and you were loving it. Silence. Slander. Just silence. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, see, I think the people who have made Saving Mr. Banks need to uh, do Saving Mr. Dahl next. Right, as in Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl, yeah. Okay. And just have him, you know, like, it's all this whole whimsical thing, like, you know, Roald, we love your books, like, we want to turn Charlie and the Chocolate Factory into a movie. And, you know, he's all grumpy and stuff, and that gets to the end of the movie where he's sitting in the cinema and he sees Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory and he just hates it. Yeah. <laughs> and he storms out in a he massive rage fit. Yeah. yeah, the Johnny Depp version of Willy Wonka, of yeah. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. I, I want to see Saving Alan Moore. Right. I don't care what you do in my books. They're not my books anymore. I want nothing to do with it. Go to hell. <laughs> the end. I think that should just be the tagline for the yes. movie. <laughs> yeah. That's it, yeah. I don't care if it's a great movie. I'm not watching it. I'm a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. If only somehow radio shows could be somehow shown on television, you know, with moving pictures, you may say. <laughs> Yeah, because like that, I'm a wizard was just priceless. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 you had the finger twitching and everything going oh, yeah. on. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I came over all Gandalf. Oh, easy. Move you did on. what to Gandalf? <laughs> Come on, move on. Serene. At uh, <laughs> uh, number three, it's Gravity. See, I rhymed that. Yeah, we've again, it's another film that we've said everything we can see about Gravity. I'm sort of coming around to your viewpoint, Mark, a little bit more sore on Gravity. I must be often do. Yeah, the the fact that I'm not uh, I'm not sure if the film will play well in two D, no, as in three D. So I'll well, just be pants. Yeah, it'll I think it's pants, yeah. it's one of those movies, kind of like Avatar, where you know it's it's built for three D. Go watch it in three D. La la la, wasn't that lovely? Forget about it. Move on. Yeah, I was screaming at Sandra Bullock. Why won't you die already? And then I went to see Gravity. Right, so I was yeah. next. Or at least get out of that uh, spacesuit. Yeah, <laughs> oh, she does at the end. She falls into wet sand at the end, which is great. Lovely. Right. Uh, number two, it's the Hunger Games, Catching Fire. Actually, before we go on to that, do you know what his original ending was going to be? To Gravity. For Gravity, yeah. I'm guessing it's something along the lines of 
Her helmet comes off, careful now, and her head expands and explodes. Oh, brilliant. And just the no. blood splatter in space at the end spells out the end. Yeah. No, one of the ideas that he originally had for the ending of Gravity was that she, she ends off, now spoilers, she ends off landing at, um, on Earth. And it's the planet of the apes. Part, no. And then part of the satellite was supposed to fall down from the sky and squash her. <laughs> <laughs> Real itchy and scratchy ending. That would do for me. <laughs> that would do because she should have died I thought they were going to kill her I thought, uh, spoilers I thought they were going to kill her when she crashed into the water I, I was like yes she's going to die here that would be amazing okay anyway that would be incredibly dark so yeah mm. you probably would love it yeah number two Hunger Games Catching Fire <laughs> yeah which is a really good film um, it's very much the same as the first one so if you like the, the Hunger Games then you'll very much like this one it's more of an evolution for the female characters in this movie rather than the male characters because they are just mourners they are really big, morning little babies. But um, Jennifer Lawrence is fantastic as Katniss Everdeen. I think the best um, the best one in this film is still uh, Elizabeth Banks, who plays Effie. I think her character evolves the most out of every char- any character in the film itself. And she is really, really good in the movie. So it's enjoyable. Have you seen the, the little um, meme going around online of her, of, of her going, Peter! And Peter Griffin popping his head out of the forest going, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's class. Sometimes it really is the simple things. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> it really is so good. Okay, right. Okay. <clears throat> Taking the top spot this week, it's our second and final new entry, Frozen. Which I loved. I loved Surprisingly. it. Yep, I loved yeah. it. Yeah. It reminded me of old Disney films, yeah, exactly. old anim- Disney animated films. It had that feel to it. Um, it's it was re- it's released at the perfect time. Mm-hmm. It's a very Christmassy kind of feel um, movie. I thought the best animated film this year so far, apart from from Up on Poppy Hill, was Despicable Me Two. But then, if you look at Despicable Me Two and take the minions out of that film, it's a bit of a weak film. Uh, it isn't a strong film with Gru as the as the lead character. Whereas with Frozen. You could take a character out of this and still feel like it's a really good film. Mm-hmm. However, if you take out the, the snowman, then, yeah, the snowman is just Olaf. is brilliant. I love that character. Very well designed. It, it re- definitely reminds me of Disney of old. And the animation is beautiful. Isn't it? I mean, the, the frost effects are incredible, aren't they? Yeah, um, I remember listening to a, an interview with uh, one of the directors. She, was, she worked on Record Ralph as well at the same time as she was doing Frozen. So she was doing both Wreck-It Ralph and Frozen at the same time. And once Wreck-It Ralph finished, she put all of her, um, her thoughts into Frozen itself. And if that's the case, then she's just a brilliant, brilliant director to do those two films back to back. Yeah. No, I, I loved it. I thought I agree. I totally agree with you. I thought it felt very old school um, Disney. And I think I said this last week when I came in the, at the end of the show that all four, myself, my wife and my two kids, we're all entertained thoroughly by. entertained. We all yeah. loved it for our own reasons, you know? You know, I really want to see it, actually. Yeah, it's really good. It's weird because I ordered, like, 40 quid's worth of food from Iceland the other week, and they gave me a little voucher to go see Frozen, but it was like, you know, like, take a kid and go along for <laughs> <laughs> Like, I yeah. didn't really know any kids, and you've yeah. already seen it, so I ended up giving it away so to him. Saxon's on the phone. He wants yeah. one of the kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again? <laughs> <laughs> But no, so I ended up giving it to a friend, but like, because I said to Nadine, obviously, who's literally my best friend in the whole wide world ever, uh, like, if she could possibly try and dress up like a 10 year old, um, which she does already. Okay. What is going on? <laughs> what just happened there? And uh, she was like, no, nah, uh, I'm not getting carded anymore whenever I buy alcohol. So obviously, I've grown up and look a bit older than, than 10 now. Because wow. before, usually, whenever we would go to the cinema as a group, Nadine would be the only one who'd be like, yes, can we get, like, six adult tickets and one child ticket? And she'd get it. You know, she'd get away with it as, as being a kid. <laughs> it's like the world's worst Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> oh, oh, make it stop. <laughs> okay. Uh, the number of times I've heard that in my life. All right. All right. You know what? Okay. So, <laughs> Stuart, so what's happening next week? This week, well, this weekend. Yeah, there's only one film, and that's The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug. Shmeer. Not Smog. It's Smog. It's Smog. It's Smog. I don't care what anybody says. No. Smaug. Yeah. Smaug. Smaug. This is like that mad Scottish man coming up uh, that comes on the show telling me it's Raz al Ghul. It's Raz al Ghul. No, I didn't say Raz. 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 It's not, it's Raz. Raz of Cult al Ghul. Raz al Ghul. Um, right, well, do you know what we're going to do, Stuart? We're going to get Big Phil. You know Big Phil, right? 
Yeah. We're going to get Big Phil on the phone because Big Phil saw it last night. He was at the premiere of it. So let us see if we can't get Big Phil on phone. 